From being drafted to becoming a dad and now his own docu-series, hear Chase Darno's journey through life. This is My TV 30's Beyond the Game with the Nashville Sounds. So Chase, I love your journeyman docu-series, kind of like life behind what goes on on the baseball field. Because in all honesty, this business is very tough. You talk about physically when you start spring training in February, then playing without really a day off, in all honesty, up until the playoffs, which if you make it to the World Series end in late October. So as a baseball player, you're evaluated every time you take a step on the field. So how do you make sure mentally you're ready to give it your best? Uh, it's, it's cliche, but I do just focus on the process. Uh, everybody has their own unique process. Something that will individually get them ready for a baseball game. Uh, for me, it's just focusing on my teammates and what I need to do to prepare for a game. Uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but uh, my process starts in the morning. I wake up and hang out with my family, and then once it hits 1.30, I'm starting to shift from family mode to baseball. And then I have my routine in the cage. Um, the people that I talk to, what I talk about, the information that I need for a game. This day and age, people don't really understand the everydayness of baseball. Uh, baseball is this sport that we're, we're here every single day, especially in the minor leagues, we get one off day a month. And a lot of people don't understand that. Yeah, and as an athlete, growing up, I always wanted to play in the WNBA. So you are a professional baseball player, drafted back in 2008, now living life. Is this life what you thought it was going to be? Yes and no. I mean, I didn't have anybody in my family, nor did I have uh, older friends that played professional baseball, so I kind of just took it as it came. Mm -hmm. uh, I, it, it, it's strange going from college baseball, where you have so much school and baseball, and you're juggling the two, trying to find the right balance, to just having baseball. All right, now let's talk about June 24th, 2011, going up against John Lester back when he was with the Boston Red Sox. As a Pittsburgh Pirate, you experienced something that less than 1% of people get to do. Got a triple. Talk us through that experience, not just the hit, but like being there. Being there, um, it was amazing. It's a milestone. Uh, it's something that you dream of when either you're a little kid or when you get drafted. Uh, you never know which team you're going to be with when you get called up, and you never know if you're going to get that hit. Um, and yeah, my first, my first at bat was against John Lester, against the Red Sox at PNC Park in a Pittsburgh Pirates uniform. It took me three at bats to get that first hit. When it came off my bat, I wasn't sure if it was uh, gonna be a home run or a double or whatever, or if it was even gonna be fair. But I dropped my bat and started running, and then I saw that it was fair, didn't leave the park, but I just kept on running and saw that I could take third, so I just kept on running. Manny Ramirez was taking his time, and he threw it in, and it wasn't in time, and I made it in the third base for a triple. And uh, I was it, was, it was a big moment for me. I love that. Mm. And there are a lot of great moments in baseball, but especially in the minor leagues, it's very transient. You have people getting called up, coming back down, disabled list, being traded. You're all kind of together as a team. You all want to win, but at the mm. same time, you're also competing for the same goal, which is to make it to the big leagues. So how do you do that successfully working together? Yeah. Well, Transient is a great word to use. Unless you're somebody like Mike Trout, who's been with the Angels forever, Cal Ripken. Not many people are franchise players their entire career like those guys. Most players do have transient experiences, especially in AAA. And you mentioned that a lot of guys are competing against each other. I think that that is even more apparent in spring training. In spring training, you have guys that are all competing for the same position. We're taking ground balls with one another, yet being civil at the same time. And uh, I found uh, for myself, I just, I, I support everybody. Uh, I want to help the organization as much as I can. If another guy outperforms me, then he outperforms me. Like, I know that I'm competing against this guy next to me, but if I start worrying about him, then I think it's going to affect my game at the same time. So uh, from an individual standpoint, I find that it's just best to have positive thoughts and to find every edge that you can to be the best you can be during the off season so that when you show up to spring training, all your hard work will just show on the field. And obviously you're a hard worker, been doing this for a while, and now yeah. you have a growing family. Mm -hmm. What is it like bringing wife and now almost kids mm -hmm. on the road with you? I, I, you know, I've, I've been a dad for two years now. It feels like it's longer. And once you become a dad, uh, baseball consumes uh, life already as it is, but being a parent and a father is consuming as well. I get sad whenever I have to leave on the road, but 
It's hard to believe that I've been playing baseball since five and that all of these things that have uh, helped me mature into the adult and father that I am now um, have happened behind the scenes because I feel like baseball has been at the forefront of everything. But having a child and, and um, having my son Jagger, it's his name, has just given me a new purpose. Uh, it gives me more perspective too. So if I have a really bad game, I could just go home and hang out with my son and play with him and it kind of just makes all these problems go away. I have something to play with and um, it's something that's going to last beyond baseball. Is he also following you in your like musical talent? Because rumor is you performed in Bonnaroo. Yeah, I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, I will. I, I, uh, it was a crazy venture. Um, I, 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 to keep it brief, I mean, my, my family is very musical, especially my mom's side. I played the violin from the third grade through the eighth grade. And the only reason that came to an end was because uh, baseball and orchestra practice was all at the same time. So I chose baseball. I like to think that I chose the right, uh, you made the right decision. Mm -hmm. Right here I am still playing. But uh, in 2016, I had an opportunity to go on this venture. I, uh, somebody had pitched our music to Bonner Music Festival and they initially said, you know, we don't care about your pretty boy baseball player. <laughs> like, you gotta have good music to be in Bonner. <laughs> And we weren't that disappointed because that's what we were kind of expecting. But then a week later, they gave us a call after listening to the music and invited us to come out and play. Speaking of Journeyman, of course, things happen in life that can be unexpected, but I believe that we really have control in telling our own story. So what is next for the Journeyman? What's your next chapter? For me, uh, I'm 32 years old. I still feel sprightly. I feel springy still. Like, I don't know how much longer I'm going to be playing. Uh, but I do love uh, video editing, I love directing, um, production, I just, I love everything about it. I like the fact that you can use one's prose, rhetoric, a visual, music, all just help create a message that is uninterrupted and you can just really hit somebody in the gut with that message and drive it home. So that whether it's two minutes or 30 minutes long, if you have something to say, you could do it however you want to and affect how somebody feels. And that's what I really like about it. And I think that uh, all of my experience in baseball, it'd be a shame to leave the sport and do something completely out of that. But to be able to combine my love for directing, producing, and editing, and baseball would be my dream job when I'm done playing. And that's, um, that's part of the reason why I created Journeyman, just to get my foot in the door so people could see what I'm capable of.